So, I got a turtle. I got two turtles, in fact, and a whole bunch of fish. Now you're probably thinking, whoa, 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 hold up. What has this got to do with the Irishman? Are these gangster fish? I don't know. I just got these guys and I felt compelled to talk about them. I guess I'm really talking to myself here with this video, thinking out loud, but that's fine. I guess this is one of them vlogs or vlogs or whatever they are, recorded on my phone, so don't expect some ultra HD crystal clear images. So this is day one of my new fish tank with two turtles and a whole bunch of fish. I don't even know how many, there's so many of them and I can't see most of them. The reason why the water is so misty is because new sand and water was mixed and it's going to take a few days for the sand to settle and then it will look clear and really nice with a huge ecosystem with such a wide variety of fishes. I'm going to clear up this algae as well, rearrange all the greenery to make it all look really nice and cool. Getting the turtles and fish was pretty much a spur of the moment kind of thing. I don't condone getting animals without proper forethought because of course they're not toys and require responsibility. But I was just watching one of those AMSR videos on YouTube with my kid who's a toddler and I just thought to myself, I want to get him something that can allow him to connect with nature, even if it's just a little bit. Rather than watch TV all day, my hope is that he might start cultivating a love for looking at and eventually interacting and taking care of these aquatic animals, something natural. And we're off to a good start because I showed him the bigger turtle I've got and he petted it, kissed it, hugged it and then started crying after he was clawed by it. <laughs> but it's awesome, it's so relaxing, it's therapeutic, just watching all these guys swimming around in this ecosystem, a harmonious world inside a world. I've always wanted a pet but never had one, for many reasons, money, space and a lack of time to care for something like a dog or a cat. Believe it or not, I actually had a goat once. Yeah, I was on holiday in the subcontinent and I bought a jet black goat. It was beautiful. And I was so shocked by the intelligence of the creature. I gained a newfound respect for the species which I had just thought of as dopey animals who graze in the countryside. He had character, moods. He used to play with me, he would get angry with me when I irritated him. We would chill out together in the sun. Even when he would urinate, he would walk away from me and spread his legs so as to not get it on himself. I was amazed. And that's been my only pet I've ever had. Getting the turtles and fish was quite an adventure itself. I know a guy who runs a business where he sells turtles and other animals and he's really helpful, answering questions you have and whatnot, perfect for people like me who have zero knowledge in turtles. If you're in the UK and interested, the company he runs is called KM Exotics and you can catch him at kmexotics at hotmail.co.uk. I'll leave a link to his stuff in the description. We found a good cheap second-hand tank with a fair few nice looking fish. And then I got the turtles and some more fish off my guy. The kind that the turtles wouldn't eat because they were used to them and the fish were too fast anyway. And with some equipment thrown in. And would you believe it, unbeknownst to me, the very same day we went over to my house, my family had work being done on the floorboards and carpets and stuff and there was no way to get the stuff into my room. So we tried again two days later this time adamant that we'd get things done. But almost everything that could have possibly gone wrong, went wrong. This time, would you believe, a rat died in my attic. Because next door had work done in their house which had caused rats to emerge and the rat poison only meant they died in corners and underground places we couldn't reach. Because of the one in the attic, maggots were seeping through the ceiling. So we had to wait in the car for the cleaners to do their thing, with drawers and wardrobes out in the landing and yet again no way to get past and put the tank in my room. Only two events of significance in my household, and both on the days I tried to get the turtles. The fish were in a plastic bag and were good for about two hours with the amount of oxygen they had. The weather was really warm, so the temperature of the water wasn't a problem. We waited and chatted in the car, I went to a chippy to get us something to eat, and all of a sudden a huge thunderstorm appeared, with hailstorms like machine gun bullets, which I got caught in. I ain't making this up, seriously, after a gorgeous summer, I'm being pelted with hails on the one day I really could have done without it. Then I get in the car, and my turtle man delivers the worst news yet. The fish have started to rise up to the surface of the water, aimless and eyes staring. They were losing oxygen, they were dying. It wasn't too late to revive the ones that had risen up, so we rushed back to my place and luckily the works had just finished, so we bulldozed our way up the stairs into my room, shoved the tank into a corner, my man setting it up and me rushing back and forth from the bathroom, chucking buckets of water into the tank. 
And then the bloody pump that pumps oxygen into the tank we bought, that seemingly was functioning when we first tested a few days ago, wasn't working. It just wouldn't work. And then one of the extension leads that we were using started malfunctioning. It was all going wrong, man. It was so tense and frustrating. We managed to get a backup pump working and eventually got the tank functioning. Most of the fish started fluttering and with a few minutes were back on their feet, in a manner of speaking. Unfortunately though, very sadly, some of the fish didn't make it. About seven, I'd say, of a total of maybe 30 or 40 died. It was really sad. There was one entire species that didn't make it. These really good looking little red ones. And this black one here, the only one I had of this kind. One that I thought was really beautiful and really contrasted with the rest of the fish which are lightly coloured. Also sadly didn't make it. I found him dead on the tank's floor surface. Still though what's done is done, we learn from mistakes and at the very least there were still a great many fish in the tank alive and well. But what with the deaths and this mist you're seeing, I don't actually know how many fish I've got. According to a list I've been given by my turtle man, I've got red hook silver dollars, tiger silver dollars, rainbows, chain loaches, black neon tetras, odyssa barbs and different types of corydora catfishes and some others. So a nice wide variety of fish. With the turtles, I've got two gorgeous creatures. Both are about a year old. One is a smaller razorback musk turtle and I've got a larger eastern cooter. Both have distinct features and are very good looking. The razorback's shell is a bizarre triangular shape and when he's swimming in the water, the blue skin contrasts nicely with the hazelnut shell. And it's a sight to behold, watching him paddle his way through the tank discovering the lay of the land and familiarising himself with his new environment. It looks a lot better in real life than it does on this phone. Apparently, this guy was abandoned in front of a sanctuary, so who knows what kind of life he's lived. All I can say is that he's incredibly shy, very reserved, and when he's in the water, he does stretch his muscles every now and again, but mostly hangs around in a corner. The cooter, on the other hand, is brimming with confidence, lively, extroverted and aggressive when he needs to be. He storms his way around the tank like he owns the place, and he just doesn't keep still. His colour is amazing, and it's so relaxing just watching these guys swim around with each other and these wonderful fish. For all the cooter's boisterousness, he does fart ass about a lot more than the other one, and yet I suspect the Razorback might be more intelligent at this point. He's the one of the two who's discovered the basking platform, occasionally lifting himself onto it and chilling for a few minutes. I even caught him once at night trying to climb the wall above the basking platform and escape from the tank, the cheeky git. The contrast in the two's personalities is clear when I hold them together. The duo started off sticking to opposite ends of the tank, but they do occasionally mingle as they get to know their new environment. The Razorback is a cute little guy who looks like a little kid paddling around a garden pool with his little feet and inquisitive pokey nose, and the cooter is simply Mr. Confident and Dr. Cool, giving the entire tank a flair and always the main attraction, the centre of attention. As the sandy water is starting to clear, the fish are becoming more and more visible and I've noticed they've already started schooling in their own little species. And it's just a joy watching all of these little creatures, it's almost impossible to feel stressed watching them. At night time it's even better. I can't wait for the tank to clear up. I'll buy a few more fixtures, clean up the tank and get a water filter that doesn't break when you need it most and it'll be even better. Thanks for watching.